Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today I'm bringing you a video where we are going to be painting. That's right, I haven't done a bit of painting for a while. The weather just hasn't been up to scratch to be painting. Um, but now that we've got all this sun and all this nice warm weather, now is the time to paint some stuff. Now we're actually going to be paying the Astra some attention today. Uh, the spoiler that I put on the Astra, the Astra GSI spoiler, um, that I fitted quite a few months ago now. I painted that spoiler before I fitted it to the car. However, ever since then, the paint has deteriorated to the point where it looks absolutely dreadful. When I go to the car, I'll show you exactly what I mean, but the paint has like flaked away and split and it's got all these, uh, what almost looks like scratches, uh, like cat scratches going all the way down it. I don't believe it's been attacked by a big cat at some point. Um, it just seems like the paint has reacted in a pretty bad way and it's all just like peeled off and flaked off and whether it's down to my painting ability or my lack of painting ability um, or some other thing I'm sure someone will be able to tell me in the comments but I want to repaint the spoiler because the bodywork on the Astra is not amazing um, however the spoiler is really letting the side down and I want to get that sorted uh, the car is probably going to be up for sale soon um, and if people see that spoiler that's probably going to turn them right off so I want to get that sorted I want to make it look at least half decent uh, for when it comes to selling it we've got a beautiful day outside the sun is shining um, so I can't think of a better time to do it so without further ado let's get started so just before I go to the car and remove the spoiler I just want to show you the products that we're going to be using today I've got the paint I've got two tins of grey primer here I've got the Voxel 157 which is the paint code for this the star silver base coat there it came with when I bought this online it came with a tin of 2k wet look lacquer which should do a really good job of protecting the paint 2k paint is pretty good so this will make it nice and glossy and shiny and as it says give it a wet look um, I've then got some just paint prep here this is, this is just like an alcohol based pre paint clean um, just to clean the surface down before I apply any paint and then I've just got the tools here which I'm going to use to remove it I've got a 10 mil socket on my ratchet to remove the spoiler and then one of the screws for some reason is a uh, like a Phillips screw so I've got a screwdriver I have also got which I haven't never used before but I'm gonna be trying it out today one of these plastic um, spray triggers which will go on the tins of paint and allow me to hopefully uh, spray it a little bit more evenly and a little bit easier it's got a trigger here which pushes down on the can as you can see and that'll push down and that'll, hopefully this is going to allow me to have like a steadier hand and get maybe a better spray pattern i don't know how it's going to work or if it's going to work uh, but we're going to give it a go it just basically attaches to a can like so and if the can was the right way round, when you press that that pushes down on the trigger and allows you to um, spray like so so we're going to give this a go i don't know how that's going to turn out but i've got it so you might as well try it out right so without further ado, I'm going to take my tools to the car and we shall go and remove the spoiler and get it ready to be painted. Here she is, look. She hasn't moved in ages. Right, I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. This is the GSI spoiler in question. This is the one that I fitted to the car um, and painted beforehand. Can you see what has happened to this? It's, like I said, it's almost like something's come in here and scratched it. When it first started out, there was just a few of these little scratches here. And I actually thought that a cat had like jumped on here and used it as a scratching post. Um, but it's all the way across, as you can probably see, all the way. The paint is just completely split. Now, when I first painted this, it actually looked pretty good. Um, it was in, it, the paint actually came out really well. I was really happy with it. Uh, but after a couple of months, it just started to deteriorate really quickly. It's almost like the paint has reacted with each other or something's happened. But it looks absolutely dreadful as you can uh, imagine the rest of the paint isn't too bad on the car but that really is letting the side down so i want to get this sorted today so i'm going to take it off which is nice and easy if i unlock the car it's just held on by a few bolts each side like so. and the spoiler is literally just held on by a 10 mil there screw there and then there's just two 10 mils on this side as well to take off. I'll tell you what, the weather today is absolutely beautiful. It might even be too hot to be painting stuff, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Car looks really weird with that spoiler on now. 
Looks naked on the back. Right, so here's a slightly better look in the shade now. You should be able to see. It was rather sunny when I showed you before. But there you go. It's really rough to the touch. Really dry, really rough. Doesn't feel like it's got any clear coat on it, even though I did clear coat it when I put it on there. I'm not sure if it's sun damage or reactions between the paints or the prep wasn't good enough when I did paint it or what's happened. I'm sure someone that is a professional painter will be able to tell me exactly what I did wrong um, or what's happened here for it to do this. Thing is, I painted the bottom as well. I painted the whole thing and the bottom's fine. There's, apart from not being very shiny, there's not a single split in the bottom which I find strange. Whereas at the top, where the sun is most of the time, that's where it's cracked, so I'm not sure if it is sun damage or not. It's really strange. I also want to try and find a way of getting it to sit upright, as it would on the car, because naturally it wants to fall back like that, but I can't paint the rear of it if it does that. I need to figure out a way of getting it to just stand up like that. I might drill a couple of holes in this table and put a couple of bolts through just so it sits upright. That's probably a good shout. Right, I managed to bodge a little hole inside the table. I've put a bolt through, one of these bolts, threaded it into the spoiler and it now holds it so that it's not um, touching the table anymore. It's fairly stable. I'm only really going to be painting the top. I will blend it in with the bottom bit, but the bottom bit doesn't actually need painting. I'm just going to um, re-lacquer the bottom, uh, but the silver on the bottom is fine. I just basically want to focus more on the top, where all the paints come off. Um, so I'm going to go get the sander, and we're going to sand all this down until it's smooth, and then we'll get painting. Right, so the plan of action is this. I've got my Black & Decker mouse sander, which I'm going to go at it first. It's got fairly rough grit sandpaper on this. I'm not entirely sure what number it is, but that'll take most of the loose stuff off and most of the high spots. And then, by hand, I'm going to come in with a block and some 800 grit. I'm going to take it down and make it a bit more smooth, ready for the paint. Right, so about 20 minutes of sanding later, this is what we are down to. Um, I completely forgot actually that this spoiler was off an Arden Blue GSI um, and I bought it off eBay in blue. Um, and that blue has started to reveal itself now as I've sanded down. What seems to have happened, and this is my unprofessional opinion, is the primer seems to have reacted with whatever was on the blue paint. I can't remember whether I sanded off the lacquer properly or not. Uh, but the primer seems to have reacted with the surface that it was put on, so the blue surface. Because, as you would have saw, before I started sanding this, the cracks um, and all the scratches and stuff actually went down to the blue paint. So I don't think it was the silver paint's fault that went on top like the base coat. I think it was the primer that seemed to react with what it was actually painted onto originally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down as far down as I can, even past the primer that I originally put on, the grey primer. You can sort of see it, you can see the silver here and the grey primer here. I'm going to sand past both of those and maybe even into the blue a bit just so that I don't have this reaction happen again. It's looking pretty good though and it feels pretty good but you can still feel a lot of these little scratches that you can see. You can feel them really bad so I want to go further than that. Keep going deep, deeper and deeper until I'm satisfied that it's, uh, it's not going to do this again because I don't want to put in all this effort and then the same thing happens again once I paint it. Goodbye, baby, on the 
Right, okay, welcome back. Hello. It's been quite a while. I didn't realize it was going to take this long to sand, even using the electrical sander, to take off that coat of um, primer and the base coat and probably some lacquer on there as well has taken the good part of like an hour and a half. I even used like a 40 grit sandpaper and that was still struggling to take it off. Um, I must have put on a lot of layers when I painted it. I can't really remember painting this, um, but I must have put on a lot of layers of paint because it took me forever. But we are there. As you can see, it is now pretty much blue. Um, I just gave it a quick wipe down with my uh, paint prep stuff. That has allowed me to see um, any spots that I've missed and also what sort of situation we're in in terms of how much further I need to go You can see that there's still some spots these lighter areas here A primer there's still some here as well Still some here a little bit on that side It's hard to see when you're standing and there's all dust everywhere and whatnot It's really hard to be able to see if there's any areas that you still need to hit um, so I've just cleaned it off and uh, that's revealed that there is still a few more bits that I need to hit, which I will do. Um, but for the most part, we're good. You can see in some places I've gone through the blue, through the Arden blue, all the way down to the primer, which was like the factory primer. I just want to scuff it up enough to where the paint isn't going to react anymore. I think if, if I had to guess, I would guess that the primer that I applied reacted with the lacquer on the blue, on the Arden blue. Maybe I didn't sand it enough when I first painted it. Um, that's what my guess would be anyway, so a little bit more sanding to do just in a couple of little areas along here But so far so good quite happy with that gone over the spoiler a couple of times with some 800 grit the reason i did that was because when i used the electric sander the tougher sandpaper does leave small scratches in the paint if you were to leave it like that and spray primer over it you would see those scratches come through the primer um, so i went over it with a really fine 800 grit just to take out those deeper scratches uh, and so you don't see them when the primer gets put on so i'm actually happy with the progress i've taken all the primer off um, i've sanded away a lot of the blue the arden blue which is the original paint i've actually gone ahead and left the underside how it was that's still the silver paint that i put on the last time because none of that cracked um, i don't know why but that is how it happened so i've left that on and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna scuff that when it comes to and then i'm just gonna prime with the top and then i'm gonna blend the bottom in with the top when it comes to putting the base coat on luckily at the moment with the days that we have um, it actually doesn't get dark until about eight half eight something like that it's now about tea time which would usually mean that i'd have to wrap up the video and wait until tomorrow to but it now means that i can have my tea come back out and still have a good couple of hours um, of working out here so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go in have my tea come back out and then i'm gonna clean it up and we can start putting the primer on so i'll see you guys in two secs Right, hello, I'm back, had my tea. As you can see, it's like, I think it's like half six now. And it's still so light, it's like the middle of the day. Uh, which is fantastic, because it means I get to come out here in the evening um, and still have a little bit of a play outside. Uh, where did we leave off? I have sanded this down. I'm very happy with how this is now. This is ready to be painted, other than being cleaned. A uh, little pro tip just for you lot, in case you are thinking of doing some painting. After you've done all that sanding, obviously at the minute there is dust everywhere. As you can see, it's absolutely everywhere, all over this table, all over the floor around it. When you've cleaned this down and you come to spray with your tins, the air coming out of the tins, the forceful air that sprays the paint out, is going to blow that dust around, probably lift up off the air, and it's going to end up dropping on whatever it is you're painting. Little pro tip, grab a watering can or something similar, and just wet the whole area around. For some reason that's hydrophobic, I don't know why, but just wet all that dust around it so that... Um, Oh, I'll just wet that, that's alright. Just so that the dust doesn't become airborne. I'm just going to wet the ground as well, just around here. Just where I've sanded. And uh, we can clean that off and we're ready to paint. You can see all that that's taken off. Turns up blue. Again, in case it's relevant, this is the primer I use. Again, I buy this off eBay. Watertech. Right, 
we go is the first coat. That first coat is just to allow the rest of the coats to adhere. Um, just needs to be really light, just a quick dusting over. As you can see, you can still see plenty of the blue through there, but seems to be good. I think a few of these scratches may cause me issues. Some of them are still quite deep, but we'll see how we go. Time for the second coat. Under the paint, under the primer, I'm hoping this camera's gonna pick it up. Can you see those scratches? I hope you can see them. But where I've used, there you go, you can sort of see them ones. Where I've used sandpaper, that is a little bit too coarse maybe, we have scratches running the length. And there's some here, and there's some here, um, and there's some over there. Maybe when I first painted this, I left loads of scratches in it and that is what resurfaced would that make sense because i don't want to make that mistake again so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to have to wet sand this wet sand the primer that i just put on there go down to the blue paint again and just make sure that there's none of these deep scratches in it because the last thing i want to do is paint this whole thing again just sand this back a little bit just wet sand it with a really fine grit um, and try and get rid of them they're not everywhere but there is some Luckily enough, I caught it where it only had a dust coat on it and like a light first coat. So it wasn't too thick. It didn't take much to get it off. I used 800 grit and it came off pretty easily. Um, I'm using the Yum Cars Detail Spray. I've always seemed to venture towards this when it comes to needing like a lubricant for wet sanding. Um, it's probably not designed for it, but it's very slick and it works really well. I've never had any issues with it. so. Always seem to go to that when it comes to using a lubrication for this sort of thing. My plan is uh, just tackle the rest. I'm going to do this edge here and the other edge. And then I'm just going to wet sand the whole thing. Sort of get rid of as many of these scratches as I can. You can't really feel them anymore. I've done quite a good job of getting rid of some of these already. It was best to do this now instead of going all the way to getting it painted. And then realise that... Um, it's just going to do exactly the same thing again. When it comes to painting, preparation is key. And so if you're not happy with how you've prepped it, always stop yourself before you go too far. Um, and just make sure that you're happy before you end up putting that base coat on. Because then there's really no going back unless you want to do what I did. And spend a good few hours sanding it all off again. So I'm going to bring you back once I've got this all done. Uh, you don't need to see me sand anymore, I don't think. So it's starting to get a little bit dark now. I just realised actually that it's Thursday. And it's about 20 to 8. Which means that... In about 20 minutes, everybody around here is going to be doing the clap for the NHS. Um, so I'm going to stay out here for that and um, I'll try and get it on camera. I don't know if you'll be able to hear people, but this area is pretty good for it. everybody claps around here. So hopefully I can capture on camera as well. This is currently where I'm at or with the spoiler. It's back to blue. Um, I've done my best to wet sand this. And to be honest, it's like buttery smooth. I can't feel any of the primer. I can't feel any of the scratches. I've tried putting my uh, like nail in them and nothing catches so I can only assume that this is going to be alright. There's not really a lot more than that that I can do. Um, I've been wet sanding it now for like 20 minutes. So what I think we're going to do now is go back with the primer. Luckily I've got two cans of the stuff. Yeah, that one's now ran out so I've got another one right there which I'm going to start using. Um, it's a whole tin so it should cover this perfectly fine. Give it another couple of coats. What I'm hoping is you won't be able to see any of those scratches through the first couple of coats. Um, that will mean that I've done a good job wet sanding. I actually completely forgot that I had this thing. I was supposed to be using this while painting, but we'll give it a go this time around.
I rate that. It actually felt really nice while painting. It sort of gives you that feel that you're actually using a gun, which is kind of cool. I like that. I think I paid about eight pounds for that on eBay and I would pay it again. It's gotten way too dark out there to film. There's something about doing that clap at eight o'clock on a Thursday, um, just hearing everyone else do it as well. Something pretty cool about that. If you or any of your family or any of your friends work for the NHS, we all thank you for what you guys are doing at the minute. That's gonna about do me for this evening because I can't do any more painting, but join me out here tomorrow morning when I put the base coat on and we'll put the lacquer on and we should get it finished up. Right, so it's the next day now. It was really dark last night by the time I finished up painting um, and there was a few little spots that I missed and wasn't able to see because it was just too dark to be able to see. And um, so I've touched them up with primer. And I'm now like 95% happy with it, uh, with how it looks. I don't think I'm really gonna get it any better. So we're gonna carry on the process today and we're moving on to base coat. I've got the star silver here. Like I said, it's the um, paint code for this car is 157. That is the Vauxhall star silver. So I'm gonna crack and spray in this on the spoiler now. Um, I probably one can should be enough to cover this whole thing. I think I only used one can last time um, and it seemed to do a fairly good job. And then we'll move on to the 2K lacquer as well. Um, I'm hoping to get this done by today so that it's got the rest of the day to dry. I'll probably end up fitting it back on the car tomorrow just so that I know it's completely dry before it goes back on. Right, so the spoiler is now sprayed silver. This is uh, three coats of silver. This tin is almost empty now, so I've used pretty much as much as I can. Um, it doesn't look too bad, to be honest. It probably looks better on camera than it does in person, but I'm not going for perfection. The rest of the car is not perfection. I'm doing it under a blooming tree, for goodness sake, so um, you're gonna get what you get. Um, but it's like, I'm like 90% happy with it. Um, so I'm gonna go with the clear coat now. I've got my 2K wet look lacquer. I'm gonna give it as many coats as I can with that. I'm just gonna use the whole tin. Um, and however many coats that gets me, that's what we'll have. Um, hopefully it looks nice and shiny afterwards. The spoiler has been out here sitting in the sun. Um, I let it bake for a couple of hours just so that I knew that all the paint was gonna be completely cured, which it is now. It's perfectly fine to touch. It's got quite a nice sheen on it. I don't know if you'd be able to pick up on the camera, but there was quite a nice shine to it when you could get it in the right light. Um, so that 2K lacquer has done a really good job. There's a couple of problems with it. Um, I'm not 100% happy with how this has turned out. I'll be completely honest with you. Number one is something of my own doing. I went to pick it up earlier to move it and I've put a thumbprint in there. Can you see that? Um, that should be able to get wet sanded out so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but in terms of the actual paint itself, it's not too bad. There's a couple of bits on the edge here um, where you can see where I used the electric sander. I must not have wet sanded it enough along this edge here. So you can see a few little marks but I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, but overall, it looks way better than it did when I started. You guys saw the paint was flaking and cracked and whatnot. So it definitely looks a lot better now. You can see that shine. If I wanted to get a little bit more gloss out of this, I could wet sand it and compound it and buff it and polish and all that stuff, but I'm not gonna bother. Um, this is perfectly fine, I think, for what 
I need for the car. Um, the silver didn't come out perfect. There's a few patches and stuff that I'm not overly happy with, but for the most part, um, it's plenty good enough to go on my old Bad Astra anyway. There you go. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and fit this thing back on the car. Do you think it looks weird with that spoiler on it? <laughs> I think it looks, it looks naked. It looks kind of cool actually, I like it, I don't mind it. I'm just gonna quickly give the mountings a clean. You can see all the gunk and stuff that's built up over time. I'm just gonna clean all that off before I sit it on. Got the Yum Cars detailer. Try and balance this. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Just gonna get a couple of bolts in. Can't bloody see. All right, I managed to get a couple of bolts in, one each side. Just holding it on there. All right, well, there we go. She's back on looking so much better than it did when we first came out here as you can see nice shiny silver spoiler with no cracks no splits nothing like that looking way better i'm well happy with that at least it actually matches in with the rest of the car like i said the rest of the bodywork ain't great anyway there's a patch on the front bumper here that needs attention um, and the rest of the paint's not that great it never was great and it's never going to be great uh, but at least it looks a little bit more presentable now it doesn't look like a like a tap mobile. Cool, happy with that. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'd say it's a pretty good place to end the video. The spoiler is now on the car, mounted, and looking 10 times better than it did when we first started this job. Um, I don't know what it is with painting. I've done a lot of painting over my time. I've painted wheels, body parts, side skirts, all sorts of stuff. And I don't know if it's because I lack patience or I just lack the technical skill, um, but they never seem to come out right. Um, there's always blemishes, there's always problems. Um, whether that's because I'm painting underneath a tree or whether that's because I just don't know really what I'm doing that much Probably a combination of the two, but there you go. This is the finished result I learned a lot from doing this. I always learn a lot from especially from painting I'll pick up tips and tricks and stuff like that along the way So I've learned some tricks for next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video If you did make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps to grow my channel I've got merchandise coming soon. So so stand by for a video on that. Thank you very much for watching I hope you guys are having fun in isolation. I'll see you guys in the next one.